We have kept you waiting over long, I fear. Not to worry, Alphano. We had some rather fine mulled wine to keep us company. Truth be told, you could have delayed your arrival a few moments more. Gibrion got the spicing just right this time. His latest batch is not only delicious and warming, but soothing to the humours. Indeed. But it was not to soothe our humours that we gathered here. Ah, oh, no. Quite right. The matter of that poor dragoon. You have discovered something. A means to save him? Let us not jump to conclusions, shall we? Assess the facts presented, then make an educated analysis, as you were taught. Pray, cast your mind back to the moment of Estinian's transformation. Do you recall how you described it to us? You spoke of the sudden pangs which racked his body when he took up both of Nidhogg's eyes, and of how his form was twisted thereafter into a shadowy semblance of the Great Worm. When he appeared at Falcon's Nest, the worm's eyes were fused to his mail. Would that only his armor had been corrupted. Snaking forth from the eyes, I described dark tendrils which entangled his very being. His ether has been all but smothered. Then he is lost to us forever? What did I just say about jumping to conclusions? Ishtola clearly stated all but smothered. As I later discovered, her impression matched my own. Though Nidhogg's presence filled my mind's eye, beneath his seething aura, I sensed the merest hint of something else. And after listening to Gishtola's observations, I became more certain of my suspicion, that the something else I had sensed was, in fact, the trace of a different will, submerged in the sea of Nidhogg's rage. You mean... Yes, tis like that Estinian spirit yet lingers. Can we not wrest him from Nidhogg's grasp, then? Tear the eyes from the armor? We know not if that would serve to separate Worm's soul from man's. None have ever attempted such a feat. Should it offer even the faintest hope of success, then by the gods, I shall be the first to try. Alphino. By all means, hold fast to your hope, but be mindful of the dangers. Even should you succeed in excising the eyes from the Dragoon's mail, we have no way of knowing if your friend's soul would survive so violent a separation. And that is to say nothing of the possibility that his would-be saviour might become Nidhogg's next host. But what other choice remains to us? Should the opportunity present itself, I will tear those foul orbs from Estinian's armor and trust in the resilience of his soul, even at the risk of mine own. Ah, I found you at last. A messenger of the Temple Knights came to the manor some few hours past. The Lord Commander humbly requests the company of the Warrior of Light and Master Alphano. Sir Emmerich would speak with us. Very well, thank you, Onawa. Twould seem duty calls. Pray see to yours, and we shall return to ours. Thank you, Yishtola, Kryl. Your words have given me hope where there was none. Come then. Sir Emmerich awaits. Alphano is allowing his feelings for this dragoon to cloud his thoughts. I worry he may do something rash. Keep an eye on him, would you? to the difference than their foes defeat. But 
will history commend their fealty or condemn their folly? The conference held at Falcon's Nest was to be a celebration of the reconciliation twixt man and dragon. But the lingering shade of Nidhogg, clad in the flesh of the Azure Dragoon, did mark the occasion by spilling the blood of his own kind. A timely atrocity to remind the children of Ishgard that the Dragonsong War was far from over. And when fear gave way to fury, the call to arms rang out anew. Death to Nidhogg, death to Nidhogg.